Hello everybody, my name is Zahir and welcome to my channel Plants and Paints. Now today we're going to be doing my usual videos which is a care and maintenance guide for a particular plant which I'm sure you already know from the description is the variegated bell marks. But also we're going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm going to do that towards the end of the video. But what it is, um, I put up the vote for my for the different types of plants for me to do a care and maintenance video on and obviously the variegated bella marks won that vote and also i think it was the day before or the day before that i actually put a vote up for if people would like me to do an unboxing of some gifts that i actually received from another youtuber so i actually received these gifts from the tropical plant addict and they've been sitting in my house since Monday and I have been itching to unwrap them. So I'm actually quite excited about today's video more than I generally would be. And I'm really always quite excited to make a video, but I'm even more excited as, than I am usually today because I've got a plant from, uh, sorry, I've got a gift from my favorite YouTuber and I'm going to uh, unwrap those gifts in front of uh, everybody today so I think more to the point I was itching to have a reason to unwrap them before Christmas arrived so I put a vote up whether people would like to see me or not like to see me unbox them in one of my videos and I think it was like 99% of the people who voted actually voted for me to unbox them and I actually put up in the vote whether people could figure out who these gifts were actually from and I gave a hint as to the fact that it was my favorite youtuber which I've mentioned in several videos now is actually the tropical plant addict and that person is actually responsible sorry I shouldn't refer to her as that person her name's Hannah she is actually responsible for being a big influence on me to actually produce my own youtube channel and um, therefore I am at the stage that I've got to today so not only do I want to thank her for her influence on me actually creating my own YouTube channel but I also want to thank her for the gifts that she's actually given to me so what we're going to do we're going to do my general video first and then at the end of the video I'm actually going to unwrap these gifts so I'm going to start off with the introduction just uh, mentioning what actually occurred to make me do this video today so generally i put up a vote on my instagram account now if any of you are new to my channel today then my instagram account is also called plants and paints so plants underscore and underscore paints and generally what i will do is i will put a vote up on there for which plant care and maintenance video people would like me to put up next and this week I put up the Golden Pothos, which got seven votes. I put up the Variegated Bell Marks, which got 31 votes. I put up the Anthurium Vitarifolium, which got 23 votes. And I put up the Satin Pothos, which got 18 votes. So that was a total of 79 votes. I want to thank all of the 79 people who voted for your votes. And for those of you who's plant didn't actually get picked for today's video don't worry I will be putting those plants back into future votes so that you do get the opportunity to vote for that plant again and hopefully in the near future you will get to see the video that you have requested so I'm just gonna get started now on on the video and my introduction generally is more to do with the plant and its natural habitat and where it comes from but there's something quite significantly different about this plant and that being its name. So I've included quite an in-depth description as to how this plant has actually got its name because I'm not sure how many people actually know the significance of bell marks. So I'm going to get started now. So the philodendron is a plant which is native to the tropical rainforests of Brazil and is part of the Araceae family. In nature, it can be found growing in large, dense clumps, and if left unattended, then it can actually get so big that it will actually begin to climb trees or nearby structures. 
so it it can turn into quite a significant plant now i'm not sure if you're actually familiar with the name belmarks but this plant amongst others are actually named after a frame famous brazilian landscape architect by the name of roberto belmarx who is actually the patriarch of using native plants in modern day landscape design his work is actually recognized worldwide he was actually one of the first people to call for the conservation of brazil's rainforests and more than 50 plants actually bear his name so you'll probably find that the name Burl Marx is spread over several plants. I have had several requests from uh, people looking for a particular type of plant, in particular the Burl Marx fantasy. Um, you've obviously got the philodendron Burl Marx. You've got the variegated philodendron Burl Marx. There are over 50 plants that actually bear this in particular person's name, this particular person's name, sorry. And he amassed a substantial collection of plants of his own at his home, which included over 500 different types of philodendron. So this person was actually quite an important person in the horticultural uh, industry because he actually sourced a lot of the plants that we've become very familiar with today, in particular ones that uh, come from the region of Brazil and the rainforests within within that country. So I just want to give a you know a quick mention to the name and make sure that people understand the significance of how this plant actually ended up having that name in the first place. So that's been my general introduction into today's plant. I, I know it's been a, something a little bit different, but I thought it was quite important to put that information out there so when people are coming across this name they can actually attach it to the person who is responsible for us being able to have these plants within our collections so what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to move on to lighting so I'm going to start the care and maintenance side of this plant so what I want to say before I start talking about lighting is this it in general is a plant that can be kept by every level of plant keeper is a very easy plant to keep it's very low maintenance it can be grown by novices all the way to expert plant keepers so i'm going to touch on that gradually throughout the video uh, in particular to the care requirements of the plant and i think as the video goes on you'll pretty much understand why because the requirements for this plant are so vast that it caters for just about anybody so we're going to start with lighting so in general this is a very durable plant and is actually capable of surviving in several different lighting conditions now for optimum growth what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to provide it bright indirect light and when i say optimum growth for you to get this plant to grow quite vigorously it will do that in those kind of lighting conditions now that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to keep it in those lighting conditions for it to remain happy now a lot of people who keep these kind of plants generally will have to look for that kind of lighting requirement and if you end up with quite an extensive collection of plants to provide that type of lighting actually becomes quite difficult because you know the areas where bright indirect light is is available to plants becomes quite limited once you've ended up with 20 30 50 60 plants however many plants you end up keeping so you end up having to put some plants that do require that, that type of lighting in uh, lighting conditions that don't quite meet that and sometimes that can have adverse effects on plants this particular plant is totally the opposite to that so you can actually end up putting this plant in your coffee on your coffee table you can end up put, putting it on your kitchen counter you can put it somewhere where the light is quite subdued as long as it's getting light it will be fine it can be in quite a shaded location and it will still grow the only difference is that it won't grow so vigorously it might not end up getting those huge leaves that this plant can actually end up producing so 
even though for optimal growth you do want to keep in it in bright and direct light you can actually keep it in quite a shaded location you can keep it in a moderately lit location and it it will do fine it will grow happily it just won't grow as quickly so that is the lighting requirements for the plant what we're going to do now I, th I think i'm rushing things a little bit because i want to get to the unboxing because i'm so eager to want to see what is in these packages that have been given by hannah i'm so excited about that but let's move on to the potting mix so the philodendron bell marks enjoys a well draining but moist rich organic potting mix the ideal potting mix will come would huh, sorry will contain a good quality well draining potting soil orchid bot potting mix perlite and a little sphagnum moss now the reason i've chosen this potting mix is because in its natural rainforest environment because it grows on the floor you can imagine the kind of things that create the the growing medium for it there is from falling tree bark or decaying leaves and things like that so generally it's going to be quite a loose substrate that it grows in which is going to make it very aerated and it's going to make it very freely draining so just to be able to replicate that as much as possible i've chosen that potting mix and what that will do is it will actually allow the potting mix to retain water without being too moist it, it will actually drain quite freely providing you use that that sort of potting mix in there so that is your potting mix what we're actually going to do now is we're going to move on to watering now i don't know if any of you have actually realized but my watering regime for all of my plants generally is the same so in every single one of my videos i do repeat the same thing when it comes to watering the plants but i'm just going to do it anyway i just want to mention that i am aware that i tell you the same thing every time i make a video about how to water your plants other than how much water those plants actually require the regime the actual way that i water my plants is always going to be the same so myself i use filtered water you can use bottled water or you can use rain water you can use uh, deionized or demineralized water and you can actually add fertilizer to that water yourself so any of these are fine the main things that you want to remember when watering your plant is that you want to allow that water to get up to room temperature because you don't want to in particular if you're taking it from a tap and then you're filtering that water you don't want to just filter it and then just put that straight in the pot because the temperature of that water is going to be quite cold in comparison to the environment that the plant's currently staying in so do give that water an opportunity to get up to room temperature and if you're filtering the water that is also giving that water an opportunity to be able to leach out any extra contaminants that are left in that water i do know that you know the f companies that produce these water filters do say that it removes like 99.99 whatever percentage it is of all trace elements that are in that water so it removes the chlorine and anything else bad that is going to have an effect on your plant but for it to filter through that filter so quickly i you know i'm a little bit dubious as to the fact that it says that it removes all of that in such a short period of time so leaving that water to get up to room temperature often i will leave it overnight gives it the water itself an opportunity to leach out anything that the water filter didn't catch now no disrespect to any of these water filter companies i'm sure that what they say must be true but i'm i'm just a dubious kind of character i i i like to second guess a lot of things and that is definitely something that i will second guess because my plants are on the line and i love my plants and you know i would hate for anything terrible to be happening to them if anything i've overlooked so i tend to try and think about everything in as much as as much detail as possible before i actually start doing anything with those plants so now we're going to talk about actually watering this plant now as i mentioned earlier this is quite a forgiving plant it's easy for all levels of plant keeping so 
the reason that is poignant to this part of the video is because this is quite a drought tolerant plant as well so it's the kind of plant if you forget to water it it's 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 not going to kill the plant it is very drought tolerant it's you know providing you're not leaving it for months and months on end and then you're noticing it's dead before you decide to water it you should be fine so you know forgetting to water it one week and then going to it the next week to water it shouldn't have any adverse effects so when watering the plant water it quite sparingly just enough so that you notice water coming out of the bottom of the pot into the drip tray or if you don't have it in a drip tray and you're watering it over a sink just enough so that you see the water start coming out of the pot and then leave the pot to stand for a couple of minutes if you've got it in a drip tray whatever water accumulates in the bottom of that drip tray make sure you get rid of that water the last thing you want to do is allow that water to seep back up into the potting mix because then you're going to end up with quite a soggy environment and the plant doesn't like particularly like a soggy environment so make sure that you're keeping it just evenly moist you know if 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 for instance just as a, as an example if you were rooting this in sphagnum moss you'd wring your sphagnum moss out so it was moist so there would barely be there would hardly be any moisture in there you pretty much need to replicate that when you're watering this plant as well so in between watering you need to allow this plant to dry out quite significantly as well not totally dry out but you need to let it dry enough so that you know the top couple of inches of that potting medium is actually quite dry now i can give you an example i don't know if you'll see it very clearly in there but my potting medium is actually really quite dry on the top it's getting to the stage where i'm probably going to need to water this in the next week um but I can feel that towards the top three quarters of this it is very light it doesn't contain much water but towards the bottom there is a little bit of weight so i do know that there is moisture left in there now leaving it like that is actually beneficial for this particular plant because what it will do it will send roots out more vigorously to look for that water so you'll end up with a huge root base on the plant within a very small amount of time um, so that is your watering regime for you um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to humidity now again because this is such a easy and forgiving plant the humidity requirements for this plant based on the fact like I was talking about in hum in the watering section that is quite drought tolerant there is not a huge necessity for you to be overthinking the humidity requirements for this plant now it will enjoy being in a humid environment obviously it comes from a tropical rainforest so if you've got a humidifier at home it will benefit from having that around if you're the kind of person who mists your plants regularly it will enjoy being misted but if you're new to the plant hobby and you don't have a humidifier you know this is a good plant to start with this doesn't have a huge requirement for that high level of humidity so you can actually get away with you know just giving this the odd mist here and there and it will be quite happy with that so that's basically your humidity requirements uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to fertilizer now as i mentioned just now in the uh, watering section of the video that this particular plant is drought tolerant so if you leave it in between watering it will send out new roots to look for water so it will get quite a lot of root growth over quite a short period of time which would make it quite a hungry plant because it's a vigorous grower and it will have a significant root mass you will need to offer it fertilizer on a regular basis so what I would suggest when fertilizing the plant is you want to fertilize it at one quarter dilution rate and you want to do that about once a month. So you're probably going to end up watering this plant about once a week, providing you're watering it sparingly and you're using quite an airy potting mix because then it's, it's going to dry out quite quickly as well. So you, like I said, you're probably going to end up watering it about once a week during the growing season. 
and therefore you're probably going to want to add your fertilizer about once a month and as i said at about one quarter dilution rate what i mean by one quarter dilution rate is that if you look at the bottle of fertilizer and it says just an exam as an example you want 10 mil of fertilizer per liter you're going to want to use 2.5 mil that's you know a quarter of that dilution rate per liter and once a month and then over the winter period you want to cut that in half so instead of going cutting the actual amount from 2.5 in half you're probably best to just push the time that you're adding the fertilizer a month out so instead of every month you're doing it once every two months but keeping it at that same dilution rate just to make sure that that plant does have fertilizer throughout the year now the reason i say that is because at the moment we're into december which means we're you know we're well into winter at the moment and as you can see from these plants they're actually still producing a lot of new growth so we've got a new stem here we've got another one on the side another one underneath that just coming out we've got one in the middle here we've got one off to the side here so we've actually got and another one there we've got six new leaves that are get uh, stems that are getting ready to emerge and produce new leaves so this plant will pretty much carry on growing throughout the year and will have its most vigorous growth during the growing season so from spring until late summer to early autumn that's when it's going to have its most growth that's why you're going to want to fertilize it once a month and then in winter it's going to slow down and then you're going to cut that fertilizer in half so fertilizing once every two months so that's the fertilizer for you what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about temperature and again it's 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 very it's very broad now the what i'm going to do first is i'm going to mention the optimum growing temperature for this plant now again going back to what i was saying earlier what i mean by optimum is for you to get the most vigorous growth out of the plant these would be the ideal temperatures for you to keep it in but that doesn't necessarily mean that if you go outside of those temperatures some adverse effects are going to happen because that's not going to be the case so for the optimum growing conditions you actually want to keep this between 16 and 24 to 26 degrees celsius and that is the optimum growing temperature for this plant now that will keep the plant growing vigorously keep the leaves looking very nice and colorful and um, generally keep you a very healthy plant but if the particularly in a lot of countries you'll find the summer periods they go over that quite easily i mean this year in england we had temperatures that went well up into the 30s and you know in that sort of scenario you're not going to be able to avoid keeping those plants in those kind of temperatures but all it means is that it's going to slow the growth rate of the plant down it doesn't mean that it's going to affect the plant providing you're not putting it in any direct light where it's in you know 30 degree temperatures because then obviously it's gonna uh, start getting burnt leaves occurring on the plant and you know that will in effect stress the plant out as well which could end up killing your plant so providing you're not doing that you should be fine keeping it in a slightly muted area where light is concerned when the temperature is quite high all it will do is it will slow the metabolism of the plant and growth will slow as a result of that so that is your temperature um, requirements for the plant what we're going to do now and finally i do believe it's finally yes it is we're going to move on to propagation now because this is such an easy plant to propagate i thought i would give a quick mention to uh, propagating this plant in this video so um, propagation is generally very easy and straightforward for this plant taking a stem cutting should be done during spring to early summer and can be rooted very easily in e either water or a moist potting mix should generally take about two weeks to start producing roots so what I'm going to do I'm going to pick up one of these plants here let me see if I've picked up the best example I think this one here will probably be a better example 
So <clears throat> when you're taking your cutting, what you actually want to do is you want to look for a node where it's produced a new leaf from. So on this particular plant, you've got this node here. You've got this leaf that's emerged from there. And you've also got some new growth occurring on the side. Let me just move this leaf out of the way so you can see. So you've got this node here. You've got the new leaf growing from the, the side of it. And you've got another leaf emerging off of there. So what you want to actually do is you want to cut a couple of centimetres down. What I would actually do on such a small gap between the internodes on here, I would cut right down towards the bottom of this. So maybe about two centimetres down. So all you're going to do, you're going to snip that off from underneath the node and then you're going to put that into water and you're going to leave it there for about two weeks and then that cutting should start producing roots and you'll be able to pop that up alternatively what you can do is you can actually put that straight into a moist potting medium and pop that straight up and after a few weeks just as with water propagation that should start producing roots for you so that is my care and maintenance guide for you for the variegated bell marks i hope you've enjoyed all that information if there's anything i've missed or there's anything else that you want to actually know about this plant then please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below and i look forward to hearing from you concerning any concerns you have about this plant if it's one within your collection and what we're going to do now is and I really do feel like I've rushed to get to this part today but I am so excited I've got some gifts to unwrap and as I mentioned I got these from the tropical plant addict and I know I mentioned it earlier but she's my absolute favorite youtuber she is definitely the reason I got into producing YouTube videos myself she's very inspirational her videos are absolutely magnificent if you're not familiar with her i definitely recommend you pop over to her channel so it is called the tropical plant addict and you will see what i'm talking about her videos are absolutely amazing and she's she's had some of the most amazing plants in her collection as well so i'm now going to move on to unwrapping the gifts that she's actually given me and the wrapping paper as well is just amazing very typical that she found such an amazing wrapping planty type wrapping paper so let's get started i'm gonna unwrap this one first i've had these sitting here since monday and today it's saturday so it's not even been that long but literally since the day that they've been in my house i have been itching to unwrap them I don't think I've ever felt like this about a gift since I, since I was quite young, waiting for Christmas the next morning, thinking, oh my God, you know, Christmas has arrived. It's time to unwrap the presents and so on and so forth. I've been very, very excited about this. And I, I, I think what I've done is I've found an excuse for me to be able to unwrap them by putting up the vote on Instagram to ask people if they would like to see me unwrap them on my Instagram channel. And thankfully, people voted yes. Uh, I think I've got a card here. Hannah's also been teasing me a little bit saying, no, just unwrap them, just unwrap them. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm into Warhammer and this is like a Games Workshop card. Christmas card oh my gosh Hannah that is amazing if I was expecting a Christmas card off of you I would never have actually oh my gosh no way oh my gosh Hannah's actually bought me a 50 pound Warhammer gift voucher I don't know if any of you actually know this, but um, as another part of my hobby, I actually paint Warhammer miniatures and she's bought me a gift voucher and I absolutely love Warhammer. I waste ridiculous amounts of money in their shops. Oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. I don't know if it's actually gonna be, gonna actually be able to be any better than this, but I am so shocked that is that is amazing thank you so much hannah i'm gonna read the card afterwards but yeah that's 
if any of you are not aware, the, this is Warhammer here. These are some characters from the Warhammer. These are the uh, the Gloom Spike gits on the top, and that is some um, miniatures from the Chaos Army underneath. Oh, that is so cool. That is that is the coolest Christmas card I've ever received. And she was actually teasing me as well, saying, no, they're not Christmas gifts. They're just gifts. You've got to unwrap them. But that seems pretty Christmassy to me. That is awesome. I love that. That is so brilliant. Thank you so much, Hannah. I'm going to move on to the next gift. Oh, wow. That is so cool. I'm so shocked. I'm so shocked. I had to actually compose myself a minute there. I thought I might have actually shed a tear for a second. I really had to compose myself. Okay, let's move on to the next gift. I'm actually shaking a little bit after opening that. That, that was such a shock to me. I actually thought I'm going to open that. It's going to be a nice card. It's going to have a nice little message inside. I really did not expect to see that. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm totally in shock right now. I'm trying to be as delicate as possible. I don't want to break anything. I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody on this channel probably knows who Hannah is. And the fact that I'm turning around and I'm saying to people, subscribe to Hannah's channel, I'd be shocked if there is anyone who's on my channel who, who is not actually subscribed to The Tropical Plant Addict. Now, any of you who are subscribed to The Tropical Plant Addict will know that she makes her own things at home as well. And she's actually made this for me. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. That's got my company name on there, Foliage Fanatic. Oh my gosh, and oh wow, those leaves are just beautiful. Oh, this is going to take pride of place somewhere in my house, for sure. This is amazing. I was feeling the package and I was actually thinking to myself, is it something that Hannah's going to have made herself? But I know she's been having so many problems with her hands recently that, you know, I really wasn't actually expecting it to be that but this is just amazing i've got to get that as close up as possible for you to see that so that you can see actually what she's done and she signed it on the back for me as well i mean so far this is turning out to be like the best gifts that i've had in a long time that is just beautiful i cannot express to you how happy i am with this that is just amazing. Hannah, thank you so much. I, I can't believe that you've actually gone out of your way to make something for me yourself with your own hands. That is just such a touching gesture that you've just done there. I'm so, so happy. I cannot believe that. Thank you so much. I absolutely love this. This is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. That is so beautiful. The varicosum leaf and the variegated monstera. Wow, that is so awesome. I'm just gonna show you that again. She is just super talented. Absolutely super talented. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. I, I had a feeling that I was absolutely gonna love the gifts that I got, but I could never have imagined that I'm going to love them this much. This is just, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I, I really can't thank you enough. I, I am super touched by these things. This is more than I ever could have expected. I, I think you've gone way above and beyond, to be honest, so far. And I'm going to start unwrapping the last gift now. And as I mentioned with the first one, I, I don't know possibly how it can get any better. I, I don't know that this can be topped. This is just, this is beautiful. 
I absolutely love this. This is going to go up in my bedroom actually once my bedroom is finished. Once I've got all the things that I'm doing in my bedroom done, that's actually going to go up into my bedroom. Wow, that is amazing. I'm so happy. So happy with that. I cannot express to you enough how happy I actually am. That is just beautiful. Okay, let's open this last gift. Let's work our way around here. I'm trying to make sure I don't rip this paper because this paper is awesome as well. A planty friend actually goes and finds planty wrapping paper. That's just, that's awesome. <laughs> I think some of you might be thinking, bloody hell, what's 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 wrong with this guy? But I can't tell, I can't express to you how how nice it feels to get a gift from somebody who has been such a big influence to me since the beginning of starting my YouTube channel and really getting back into keeping plants. I've kept plants a lot of my life already, but there was a stage where you know, my children came along and I became quite pressed for time. So I didn't really get a lot of time to do anything as far as my own hobbies were concerned. And now my children are quite grown. I was able to start paying a bit more attention to myself, I suppose. And keeping plants has always been something I've loved. And I, I know for a fact that Hannah was a big part in me actually getting back into that hobby. <laughs> oh no, I can already read what's written on here. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's brilliant. It's quite funny because I got a new mug today, so now I'm, I'm going to be challenged between my two mugs. Crazy plant mans are here. Oh, I love that. That is so brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was shaking the box and nothing would move in the box. So I was shaking it for a few days thinking, oh, what? what could possibly be in here I, I was a bit puzzled as to what it could be because usually you'll hear something move around but it was just stagnant in there and you couldn't hear anything and i had no idea whatsoever might be in there but i know where this mug is going to go so i don't have that dilemma this mug is going to sit on my desk at work and this is going to be my tea mug for work because i drink copious amounts of tea i actually go through about six cups of tea in my day at work and that's probably minimum so this is now going to be my tea mug for work Anna, thank you so much i cannot i really cannot express in enough words how happy i am with the gifts you got me they are way more than i actually expected in fact i'm shocked that you actually went to the Warhammer store and you spent £50 on a voucher for me. That is, that is crazy. That is crazy. You are super kind. I can't thank you enough. I, 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 I don't even know what to say. I, I just think, I just feel like, you know, this is way, way, way more than I, I ever would have expected to receive. And I can't thank you enough. That is just super kind of you. And this card is amazing. I don't think I'm going to get a card that I'm going to enjoy more than that this year. Being that I'm such a big Warhammer fan. I will make a point of, in one of my videos, I'll have some of my Warhammer stuff around to show in some of the videos. Because I create dioramas, you know, like uh, scenery, landscapes. And then I create battles within those landscapes and stuff like that. But I, I think I'll, I'll pre-warn everyone before I actually do a video with my plants that actually contain some of that as well so yeah this is definitely my favorite of all three of those gifts though because this is something personally made by hannah and that is you know as a sentiment it doesn't get much more special than that that is absolutely beautiful hannah firstly i want to thank you so much for these gifts they are absolutely amazing i really was not expecting anything like what I've received today. This is this is just amazing. Thank you so much. 
I'm pretty much going to end my video there. Otherwise, I'm going to keep waffling on about the gifts that I've received. I'm just going to go and enjoy them to myself for a little while. So I hope you've enjoyed my video today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed my unboxing of how happy I am today. That It's actually come to the day where I've unwrapped them. I'm so pleased. It's unbelievable. I look forward to making more videos for you all to enjoy. My name's Zahir. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. If you've not gone over to my Instagram account, then please visit my Instagram as well, which is also Plants and Paints. And please don't forget to visit Hannah if you're not subscribed to her channel. Her channel is The Tropical Plant Addict. I can promise you, you won't be disappointed. Um, I look forward to making more videos for you to enjoy. Uh, my name's Zahir, this is Plants and Paints, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.